Hey YouTube, what's going on? Joseph Vollmer here. Today, we've got an 11 Chevrolet 1500 5.3 truck. Misfire, cylinder four. Was previously diagnosed as having low compression. We're gonna tear into it and see what's going on. I suspect we've got a valve issue with the active fuel management. And on these trucks, active fuel management cylinders are one, four, six, and seven. So we're gonna tear into it and see what's going on with cylinder four. So hang in there, don't forget. Questions, com put them in the comment section, rate it, hit the subscribe button, and we'll get into this, and I'll show you what's going on as we're diving in. Right. First thing we're going to do, get this out of the way, 8 millimeter, get the air intake here out of the way. Unhooked. <sighs> that loose. Got the main plug in for coil packs unplugged. And I'm gonna unplug all the plug wires, just let them dangle. So, there's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this valve cover down. And I'm working on the last one back here, which is right down there. And it's just not much room between a firewall and that to get a ratchet in there. So, we'll get those out. Or not, they don't hold the valve cover down, they hold the coil packs down. So once I get it out, I should be able to get the coil packs out of the way. Then I can get the valve cover out. And then we can see what we're dealing with. Alright, that's the last one. And then, where is it? Did I forget one? Oh, sure enough, there's one right there. should be the last one. If the whole set of coil packs out as one unit, and then I just need an eight millimeter to remove the four bolts that hold the valve cover. those and then we can pop the valve cover off and I'm just gonna pull this PCV line that way I don't have to fight it out. The valve cover will come off nice and easy if it doesn't get caught on everything. These two valves right here are the valves for cylinder four. Now, <clears throat> I'm 
take our coil packs. We're gonna plug them, we're gonna drop them in here, just like this. And we're gonna plug our plug wires back onto them. Once we got all the plug wires in, we're gonna plug in the big white connector. That way all the coil packs are gonna operate properly. <clears throat> Come on. There. And then, Hook that and get this stuff to cooperate now. I want to try and get that out of the way of the valve train and everything else down here. I'd love to get these coolant lines up out of that way, out of the way too. Because I don't want to get that gasket out. There. This got hung up down here. It wasn't supposed to. That's part of my problem. Like, there, come here. There. Okay, so that needs to come up here. I'm just trying to get everything arranged so that it's out of the way. And, we don't have anything that's going to get caught in the valve train. Come on. All right. Now that we've gotten that all rearranged, everything's safely away from the valve train. I'm going to set up. I'm gonna start the engine. We wanna keep an eye on these two rocker arms. Cause I bet as soon as I start the engine, I'm gonna get a light for you. One of those is, one or both of those are gonna quit moving. Hopefully, hopefully you guys have a pretty good view. I'm gonna keep an eye on those two when I start it up. As you can see, that valve isn't moving at all. I can touch this lifter, it is dead at the door now. So all the rest of them are moving, but that one, it, that's our issue right there. So that's we have one of these come in with a miss on cylinders one, four, six, or seven. Aside from the obvious of spark and injector pulse, um, especially when there's no misfire at initial startup, but shortly after startup, you develop a misfire. And if you go back and look at the video, You'll be able to see what I'm talking about because I, I'm sure that I, I wasn't around here to see it, but I'm sure that that rocker arm was moving as soon as the engine started. And then shortly after, within a second or two, it went still. I've seen this more than once with these active fuel management lifters. Basically, our issue is we have a problem. That active fuel management lifter has collapsed. It's no good. It's not operating properly. It'll have to be replaced. And in order to do that, You've got to remove the head, the intake, the heads, everything has to come off, or at least the head on that side has to come off in order to get the lifters out. So, and if the truck's got any mileage on it, and these are aluminum heads, it's a good idea to send them to a machine shop and at least have them checked for flatness. And if they need to be reworked, have them rework them. Um, 
I'm going to get a hold of the customer, find out what they want to do, try and get some numbers and some options together because I do believe this truck, this truck's got quite a few miles on it. So it's a question of whether they want to put an engine in it. And then on the other hand, um, you know, when we get it torn down, we definitely need to at least go in with a bore scope and look at the cam lobe to make sure there's no issues with the cam lobe. Um, I kind of doubt it. But if there are, then you either are at a point where you replace the cam or go, are we better off just replacing the engine? So, like I said, that is one of the problems that I have run into multiple times on these active fuel management engines when you have a lifter that goes dead. We've also seen valves, the active fuel management valves, we've seen it in two different occasions where the valves will start to suck up into the head and basically the, the dish in the center of the valve will get deeper and that's another problem that will cause a misfire like this. So do me a favor. <clears throat> if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to rate it. Subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. And don't be afraid to get out there and get your hands dirty, guys. You might have a little fun doing it. We will see you on the next one.